It is my pleasure to welcome a television icon to City Field tonight, but a Queens guy at heart, because he went to Queens College, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. Thank you, Howie. No pressure now. You're throwing out a first pitch tonight, right? How many people have said, don't bounce it? Everybody. Yeah. I, and have I, you... But I am I'm a performer. I understand. I'm used to being under tremendous pressure. Nobody is under more pressure than a stand-up comedian. You have to get a laugh every 12 seconds. That means nothing when you get out to that mound, by the way. Yeah. But I, I got nerves to steal. All right. Well, we've got to talk about something here because here's your bobblehead. Yeah. And this is the giveaway. What do you tonight. think? First of all, I tried well, to dress like the bobblehead. I don't know if you noticed that. Look at that. I I'm going to ask you an objective question. Yeah. That looks more like Donny Osmond to me. What do you think? Well, it's 90s hair. We wanted <laughs> 90s Jerry. So that's ni my 90s hair. I get it. Uh, but, uh, you know, bobbleheads are not known for their great likenesses. It's not like the uh, Lincoln Memorial. Well, you have the honor, uh, I guess, of becoming the first Queens College alum ever to get your own bobblehead. That's what you said. Think and back. I could be. And I guess, yeah, who else would have it? Carol King didn't have one. You went to Queens. I did. Seven of the best years of my life. Wow. Yep. No bobblehead. And what year did you graduate? Seventy, technically seventy-seven, but it was really fall seventy-six. So, and was I it? was there seventy-six. I understand. We were never classmates, though. No. How would you know? Uh, I was not in many classrooms. Radio and television department. Yeah. Cast. 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 Like, cast. Yeah, yes. Cast. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dr. Greenberg. Now that was uh, drama and theater. Who was that guy? Had the limp. Which one? That uh, we used to just that walk did around. the TV production class. You didn't do TV production. No. What'd you study? Uh, well, Robert Bachet, does that name sound familiar? He eventually ran the Museum of Television and Radio. Oh, and he no. did a lecture, Bob Crawford. But Crawford, I think, Crawford. had a limp. He had the limp. Crawford. The, yeah. was the guy with the limp. Yeah. 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 He was good. I liked him. Yeah. Because he, he let us make fun of him. Which yeah. We all like. But. Um, this whole business about you being around here makes you look like a little kid. Because I see you're talking to Pete Alonso, you're talking to some of the players. Yeah. Are you kind of reliving your childhood when you come here? Yeah, that, that's, I mean, I, I always wonder what it's like actually for guys like you who do it every single night. Does it still, for me, anytime I turn on the game, I'm 12. Yeah. And, and but I, you know, I remember the, the 80s and, uh, you know, the 70s. And so it's, it's your whole life. It becomes a companion for your whole life. So, yeah, just me, the colors, the logo, uh, it's just, as soon as someone comes on the team, if they're in a Mets uniform, I like that guy. Your new guy, yeah. right? Your new best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have any recollection of the first Mets game you ever went to? Or maybe I do. Which it was a Padres doubleheader. My cousin took me because my dad didn't know anything about sports and would never think that I would want to go to a game. And my cousin saw me watching night after night after night. He says, have you ever been to a game? I said, no. He says, and he took me. How old were you? Do you remember? Oh, I would be like uh, 67. So I would be 12, 13. Right. Perfect. And, uh, and I got uh, Sonny Roberto's autograph, who was the <laughs> fifth string catcher for the Padres. <laughs> you know what the scary thing is? I remember that name. Do you really? I remember the name. Sonny I, Roberto. Yeah. yeah. Well, that wasn't a very Vic good Vic Albano team. was my co it was Vic actually my cousin's husband that took me. Nice. And then yeah. that kindled the love affair with the Mets. No, somehow, I was right? in love already. I mean, there were guys in the neighborhood that liked the Yankees. And, and I just I, I find that a very interesting thing, that you just know the team that you're meant to be with. And I just knew I'm not the Yankee type. Well, it was, it was interesting that, you know, you had a Mets and a Yankees component on the show, yes, right? You had yes. Keith on the show. Well, Larry was a, a Yankees guy. That I know, yeah. yeah. So was there ever a tug of war between the no. two of you as to which? No, it just you know? was just, we, either one was fun for both of us. Anything that we could squeeze on the show that had to do with baseball, we loved to do. And you never, correct me if I'm wrong, the scene or the show where George Steinbrenner actually appeared Yes. It was never released? That's I've seen correct. it on YouTube, but it was never released. Oh, really? It's on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Copyright yeah. infringement? <laughs> yeah, we probably should have run that. Well, you know, when you make these shows, you kind of, they run long, and you got to get rid of scenes to make them fit yeah. the time, and it just wasn't a very good scene, so we had to cut it. So, but he was very nice and flew out and did the show, and he was great. But Larry was funnier. As Steinbrenner, as his yeah, voice, yeah. 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 Um, comedians and cars getting coffee is yeah. coming back again, right? Yeah, That's July 19th. 
Who are some of the guests we can uh, look for? We have Eddie Murphy, Matthew Broderick, and we look shot our show here. Look at this. This, this is Field. the Kenny Banya of the Mets here. Coffee? This is hacky. This is unbelievable. <laughs> My whole life came together here. Now that's a promo. What do you call this show, by the way? I have no idea. I don't even think it is a show. We might not even okay. run it. This is a pilot. Yeah, this yeah. is just for my own. I know yeah, the this feeling. is for my own scrapbook. No, we actually do things called one on one that I've done with a lot of the Mets alumni. Yeah. And we've run it on social media, and apparently. Social media. Yeah, wow. You know, like seven or eight people have you're watched on it, social right? Social media. Hey, that's yeah. big. That's really, that's really big. Hard to get on there. Uh, so they tell me. <laughs> um, so I, I think I saw Eddie Murphy. You did one here with Matthew Broderick, mm -hmm. right? Comedians and Cars. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Uh, Jamie Foxx. We have 12 guests. What did you think of Jamie Foxx as George Jefferson? Did you see that? Well, maybe you didn't Only see it. Only the flub. It, oh. that, that, was a, that was very popular and that's on YouTube. What I saw remember. that. Yeah, and that's yeah. what everybody remembers. He's an unbelievably funny guy. Great guy. The, Ed, when you... We're with Eddie Murphy, and I don't know because I haven't seen it, obviously, if this has obviously. come up. I would love to see Eddie Murphy go back to being the Eddie Murphy of, you know, Trading Places, Beverly Hills Cop. Yes. Does, does he have a sense that uh, you He does, and we talk about that. And, mm -hmm. you know, comedians are different around other comedians than they are with anyone else. And that's what I think people like about this show. A regular interview with a comedian is like this. It's not that funny, but... I'm guilty. <laughs> but there's something happens when comedians are with other comedians. We never talk about the things we're supposed to talk about. And then it becomes a, a, a more of a crazier conversation. But I got to go with Eddie back to where he started on Long Island. He's from mm -hmm. Roosevelt. And uh, I, I felt like the show really captured the essence of that guy that you're talking about that I love, that everybody loves. And you can see it's still in there. Sometimes people have to be in the right package, you know, to, to have the right flavor, if that's not too cute. It's, quite, it's the coffee. Yeah, it's the coffee gets yeah, me going. I get it. But for you, is, is that show as much an avocation as it is an opportunity for you to craft something together? I mean, is that in its own way as satisfying as... A network sitcom because it's no, all you no. because you're putting it all together. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I love doing it just because I I love comedy so much and I love comedians so much uh, that I just enjoy hanging out with them and I thought the public might enjoy seeing what that's like, but uh, it's just a fun little show and uh, that I love to do and I also wanted to compress the talk show concept a little bit, so the Eddie show is the longest show we've ever done. It's 40 minutes. Oh. But generally, we don't go more than 15. So it's a very tight, compressed, like stand-up. You always want it to be compressed. It's just the funny jokes. Now, last week, we had the 1969 Mets here for a 50th right. anniversary. And I was honored to be the MC, and I'm introducing my boyhood heroes there. Wow. I know what a thrill that was for me. You did a Comedians in Cars with Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks. Yes. Is it fair to say that's about as good as it gets for a comedian? Yes. Mel Brooks uh, and, and Carl Reiner are like, uh, you know, in comedy, that's our royalty. Yeah. That's our king and queen. And uh, just to be around those guys, yeah, for me, that doesn't feel real. And so, what about that? Now, you've got a bat you're parading around here that one of the guys just signed I've for you. I've got a bat from this guy who every Met fan loves. And, and it's not just that he's a tremendous ball player, which, of course, he is and made this incredible uh, hot start this year. But the guy has given off that certain thing that we all look for in a ball player. And if I could use the word, it's, there's a certain generosity about him. There's a certain gratitude about him. And I don't think athletes know that this is what fans uh, desperately want from them. We want to see that you appreciate this and you're grateful for it and you're enjoying it. It's, it's not so easy being an athlete these days. You know, you got to perform on the field, but you also have to project an image that people like. You know, the fans just gravitate to certain players. But I, I, as soon as I saw this guy play, I just, I just loved him. And the trick is for him to be that way 10 years from now, too. That's right. That's same challenge much for you. harder to do. Much harder Is that a challenge do. for you? For me? Yeah, same thing. Um, to be honest, no. Because I... my. I love comedy more than anything, and I, 
and I've had a lot of success and I've had this great lifestyle, but none of that is as important to me as a, a new bit that I'm working on and I go to the clubs late at night and I go on stage in front of 50 people and I work on my jokes and that's what I really love. So I think for ball players, it's, if it's always about the game, you'll, you'll, you'll be good. But if it becomes about something else, then you're in trouble. Do you pop up unannounced at some yeah, of these clubs? Yeah. So you'll just go on, they'll put you on, yeah, you do a set or yeah. whatever? It's my love the game clause. Remember Michael Jordan had a love the game clause in his uh -huh. contract that he could play a pickup game <laughs> anytime he wanted, which most professional basketball players right. cannot because they don't want to, they worry about the injuries. But in my contract with uh, George Shapiro, my manager, I have a love the game clause that I can go on anywhere at any time and uh, take that risk. And are you going to continue to do more formal, organized stand-up on the road? Because I know yes, you've been I, at yeah, the I Beacon, right? Yes, I perform at the Beacon, right? I perform around. That. I'm going to London next week. And comedians, we love to work. We never stop working. But the only time in my life that I'm not comfortable is when I'm not working. You know, is it like that for you? Um, I heard you talking about uh, a John Sterling and the yeah. grind. Uh -huh. Tell, I'm, I'm, I have to, as long as I have you here. Yes, And I'm I know you're a little get. interested in me, but I'm interested in you too. Anything, I'm here This for is you. the key to comedians and cars, by the way. I always turn it around. Does it ever get to be a grind, or do you ever just kind of take a deep breath and go, okay, we got another game today, and you know I'm not what? in the mood? The grind is when the game slows down. They've got to find a way to pick up the pace in this game. You We've think all talked so? about it. Yeah, because now games are running 315, 330. What should it be? And it, well, there, it should move and flow to where ideally a game is two hours and 45 minutes. How are you going to do that? Well, there are a lot of ways they're trying to do it. How by would you keeping do it if it. you were the commissioner? Well, if it means that some Can't entities are going to take a little bit less money, I would say we cut more commercial time between innings. You know, okay. not going to do that. That costs money. No, um, it's all right with you. We'd like to make a living. I understand. Well, me too. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of yeah, get where the bread's your butter. Inflated salary. They, uh, yeah, really. You just a little pin will take care of that inflation, right? <laughs> what do you but, think about? Do you ever watch like an old game? Where and did you I see, lose control here? But, uh, when I walked on the set. I understand. Do you ever watch an old game? <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and you watch it, they never, like Mazeroski, right. 1960, never steps out of the box. Well, that's the point. And the Could we ever get back to that? If the umpires and the players union would decide that they have a joint mandate to, to move the game along in that way, you can do it. Because would you advocate for that? Absolutely. You can't step out. I get a lasso and, and get these you guys. You've got to call time step. to step out of the box. Absolutely. What, el what else bothers you? I think pitchers take too long between pitches. You wouldn't want a, t a clock on them. That's annoying. You know what, though? But it's worked in the minor leagues. I, it, I'm not sure if it's inevitable here, but there's a pretty good chance it's going to happen. They've done it in the minor leagues, and it's worked. How many seconds do they get in between I pitches? I think it's like 20 seconds if nobody's on base. And, wh and what if uh, they go over that? What well, if, then it's a ball? they're... It, it, you, they haven't really gotten to what it would be in the major leagues if they did that. You can charge them with a ball. You can give them a warning. Like, that's going to help. And right. then, you know, if there's a repeat what offense, else? What, then you charge them with a ball. What, what else is a big offense for you in terms of pace of game that bothers you? Just throw strikes, man. Well, I mean, there's, like, there's, Yeah, no, we don't want to throw strikes. Well, It's not easy, you know. Guys I'm nimble. To get the guy there to are miss. guys who nimble, you know. Well, they, that's, that's the And there's too the many game. guys trying to hit home runs. And you know what that produces? More foul balls, more walks, more strikeouts. Oh. The biggest thing they need to do to improve the pace of this game is get it in play more. If you really study, if you, if you decide, I'm going to watch a game tonight from this perspective, I want to see how often the ball's in play, you'd be shocked at how relatively, not rare, but how much less frequently the ball is in play on than it average used to be. than it used to be. Because from the 80s? Everybody's trying to hit home runs. Everybody's trying to strike out the hitters. So you get a lot of walks. You get a lot of strikeouts. You get a lot of foul balls. And even when the ball is hit for a home run, they call that, there were three, they call them true outcomes, walk, strike out, home run. Mm -hmm. And there are more of those, quote, true outcomes in this game now than there have ever been. And you check the stands now. People are looking at their phones. They're talking to their neighbors without really focusing on mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I know they've acknowledged they need to address, but they need to get more teeth into it than they've had so mm -hmm. far. And frankly, I don't know how you do that. If the mindset is everybody hit fly balls because the infielders are shifted around, do you like the shifts, the uh, over shifts? I don't like the shift, but I cannot understand that I'm a major league professional hitter 
and I can't focus on going the other way if mm -hmm. they're shifting on me. I think if I'm good enough to play in the majors, I can learn to go the other way. I think I would put some time into that. I would never let them shift on me without taking advantage of it. How, how could you not? Well, hopefully it happens, but I know it's always great to see you here at City Field. I hope you'll treasure that Pete Alonso I bat. I sure will. If he wins the home run derby, you could probably make some serious money by selling that. And that, you know, is the you most important that. thing to me. Yeah. You know, that's a Peter Alonso. You better ask him if that's legit. I did ask him. And I it couldn't. says Peter. It's supposed to say Pete. Oh. Uh, Are you coming on the air with us tonight, I, by the way? If, I, if I'm uh, invited, I would love to because I love your sh broadcast. I, I appreciate listen that. to it all the time. Any inning... Feel free to barge in. I think they have me coming in the, Who's the they? second. Who's they? The second. You have yes. your handlers? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I just kind of look real serious yeah. for a minute. Well, you I'm, know, you have a, I'm sorry. You have an icon here. Bottom of the second? Yeah. I look forward to it. It'll be great. And on behalf I don't know of, it's the top of the bottom. Well. But with the pace of the game, I'll be cares, there. Right? That's, that's right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and on behalf of every Queens College alum, mazel tov. That's the thing. Thank you, Howie. Pleasure. Jerry Seinfeld on one on one or whatever we're calling whatever this particular this segment. Yeah. Hope See you, you get next time. Up. <laughs>